All right, I've been recording. I'm trying to get access to my files. Okay. So I want my back, I want my jobs to go to my U drive. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna double click open. I create a new folder here. Uh, Mexico. Then I'll copy this. And then Okay. Clean up time. How long do I want to retain like my retention time? How, how long do I, do I want to retain the job? So I'm just going to give 25 hours. Why I give, to, if I give 25 hours, it is actually 24 hours, means one day is 24 hours. So I'm going to be, I want my retention period to be, I, I need to have one database after every, uh, every day. So if I put exactly 24, it's gonna delete the database, so I'm 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 not gonna be saving anything. It's just like, so when I put 25, it's gonna be saving at least one. I'm gonna be retaining at least one database after every job. What determines that clean up at uh, time? Is it the company SLA that shows that? Yeah, as per the company SLA. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. And that's probably a retention policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, I'll put that three if you want. You can put that one. That one is just like where you want the locks to be safe. So I'm not gonna change anything on that one. And then uh, lock to a table. I say yes, and that's it. I'm just gonna execute. And uh, it runs successfully. So if I refresh, if I go here, uh, go to jobs. You see the amount of jobs that create. So when I show you my screen the first time, there was no job here. So I have a, a full system database. I have a full uh, differential. I have a full uh, user database and everything. So what I just have to do here is just to edit some of the jobs and make it uh, work according to my per company SLE. So what I'm gonna do here for example, I'm gonna start with my full, my user, my full database, uh, full user database backup. So I'm gonna right click on it. I go to uh, properties. I want to edit the step uh, to make it suit my company needs. So if you open edit step, you see the, the parameters already there. So I can go back to the script to the hologram uh, website. So I can just, it's very easy. I can just follow this, uh, the, the, everything is already explained here. So if I want a full uh, database backup, a database backup, I can choose what I want, system, uh, user, or whatever. So on my screen, let me show you my, I'm gonna put this one here so that we can we can always look at it. Okay. So 
So you said execute the uh, video dot database backup. So you have a database, I have user. So it's in match with, this is the one user database. It's for all user databases. It's gonna be taking backup, full, data, full backup on all my user databases. So if I go the next thing that it says on, says there is a directory, which is the U drive, backup type full, verify, yes, I want it to be verified, clean up time 25 hours, check some, yes, lock table, but there's something I want to add there. I want the database to be compressed. So I just go here and I, I can just add, after the clean up time, I can put enter, I put add, compress, equals to, yes. Yeah, sorry, please, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Yes, why is the reason you're compressing the database if uh, the um, if the database is not large? If it's a small database, do you have to compress it? Actually, to answer that question, it will depend on your on your space, the space you have to save the backup. So if you don't have enough space and you can just go ahead and ask some manager. Maybe you're trying to save some space, so you compress the database. That's the only reason, just for space for, for space management. It's yes. no other reason. Uh, Mike, can, can you, you you came in? I forgot to introduce you today. Can you just please put on your video so they can see you? Hi uh, guys, this is Mike. Okay, hold on. Okay. All right. So, Sorry, guys. Let me just put on my video. And even John Paul, I don't think you've ever, we've ever introduced you, man. Tom, I lost my money from the introduction. Don't worry, just do it. <laughs> All right, guys, this is uh, a Michael, um, um, Mickey J. So you can call. Yep, him. yep. Is that our Nigerian actor? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. And John Paul. I said, yeah, John Paul. Hey, yeah, that's my good. best actor. Only one. Me and John Paul, they follow the code. Yeah. No, that's yeah. right. John Paul, you follow the code, Abby. You are still in the celebrity class, though. One guy. So, Michael is a, a, a database administrator. He actually works in, in Los Angeles, California, right? So, he'll be joining us going forward. So, I just wanted to uh, let you guys uh, welcome him into the group. And um, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to. So, Mike, the thank you so much. You compress this sometimes it's just you're not compressing the database because I heard you ask about database compression. You're compressing, but the back of file. So there's no reason for you to keep that huge back of file there. It's just a back of file. Even though when you compress it, if you ever use that file to restore the database, it will be decompressed. But by keeping it there, you're just compressing so that you don't take up so much space. Let's say you need to keep that back of file for one week. If you compress it, it gives you room to keep more files. That was the reason why you do that. Okay, thank you very much for that. Good. Yes, Jay, go ahead. Yeah, so we also using this uh, this top procedure. We also have an option to use a backup tool. So we can add, if you want to use a backup tool, you can just add it there, which I'm not gonna use a backup tool. Uh, you want to check the buffer count. All these, all, all this, all, there are all these options that you want to add if you want. If even if you want to encrypt the database, you can just add it and then you just say encryption, yes. And then you set the uh, encryption uh, algorithm. And then it's pretty much straightforward. So you can just come over here, you copy what you want to add to the, already, to the script and then you just, uh, just add and then you click okay. So, Right now, I pretty much want to go with this. And then, okay. And then I'll go to schedule. I want to schedule it to be, to work uh, daily. Uh, once every day or call every, let's say, or call every seven. What's the time right now? I have uh, 10, 15. Just say okay every 7 p.m. Mm. 
Um, never end. Okay. Yo, just name a name. Mm -hmm. We'll just see. Probably it's always good to give the same name, but for them for daily for demonstration purpose, you can give anything. But generally, it's good to give the same name. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Uh, you can set up your alerts, your alerts, your notifications. If you want to set up your email notification, you can add that as well. If you want to set up triggers, you can do that. And uh, okay. All right. Uh, now if I test it, I can start job at this stage. And see, successful. So that's pretty much it guys you can go ahead and then you edit all all this and maybe if, you, if right now all these ones they are not yet edited so they they, they won't work a part of this uh, the full user database backup so right uh if there is any should in case you create any job i don't want it to be running you can just go ahead right click on it and stop the job that way it won't be running you still and then, yeah so and then you can still add another job. Maybe there is a job that wasn't created by default. You can just come over here and you just new job and you add it and you can use this to, to help you. For example, let's try to create, to add something that is not here. Let me see. Uh, let's see. <coughs> You mean like adding an, an, an extra job on the thing? Yeah, yes, adding an extra job that wasn't that wasn't created by default. I think pretty much everything was created by default. Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. In view of time, I have to I have to uh, uh, stop you. Uh, except you have other things you wanted to demonstrate. No, I think this is pretty much what I wanted to show you guys because uh, it's a very easy way to mm -hmm. to set up jobs and without without writing long scripts and correcting mm -hmm. scripts yeah yeah pretty much straightforward thank you so much jay thank doc, you so much. Doc, can you give me three minutes let me just uh round up with yes. what you said this is something this is something very really important and uh it's good that people can have an understanding from here so you can go back and look at it at your job so let me just show share my screen here for for two minutes if okay. you don't mind all right all right Manuel, maybe we stop sharing Okay, so let me do this screen. Okay, you all, you all see my screen. So what NJ has just done here, he, he went to that website, right? That website has a complete download link where you can download that script to run it and it will create all those, all those jobs for you. And on each of these, this script you have to the left, you have the documentation for everything that happens there. That is what one J was uh, going through. So if you go like on the backup, when you download that solution, you click on the SQL Server backup. So this one gives you the documentation for the backup jobs that you have there. And that is where you can look here to have all the parameters. So by default, what Jay was uh, saw there or what he showed you all there, adding the compression, that is another parameter where you could come on the documentation of that particular script. So he has, he has, uh, Ola Green has already put, uh, written some sample um, parameters for you to use to execute that store procedure. Like this one, uh, backup all user databases using checksum, compression, verify the backups and delete all backups. So this is already the parameters that he has given you to that one. If your backup is supposed to be in the network location, there is a parameter here that you could use to backup the database in a network location. That is how you, that is how you see it. And if you are trying to do that backup over four different servers, you also have those parameters here. So you just need to be able to go into that website on the documentation of that particular store procedure and be able to read what are the various parameters there for you. to so just go now on the job, as NJ displayed earlier, just change the parameters to what you want based on what you have seen here. You know, so it is good that you go through this. You have a lot of parameters that you can execute using that store procedure.
It is the same for the index optimized job that you have on that website. If you go on the documentation, under the, uh, go on the documentation under the index, index maintenance, you see all what the, the store procedure is doing. So you can read through and see what the store procedure is doing. And below also, you will see sample uh, parameters that you can use to execute that store procedure. That you see here, if you want your fragmentation level, at this point, he, at, uh, this one is actually five. If you want to do like just 15 for your rebuild, you can change this to 15, change this to 20. So he has a lot of parameters that you can combine, right, to make it work well for your environment. So just take some time, download a store procedure, run it on your test server, on your personal server, then go through the documentations to see the various parameters that you can include in that store procedure. That will really help you a lot. You don't need to set up, uh, you don't need to go and start manually creating jobs and stuff like that. So thank you for bringing up this in your engine. That's just what I wanted to add up. Guys, can we uh, put our hands together for Jay Emmanuel, please? Congrats, Opa. More, more grace, so more grace. And thank you. This thank you so much. Uh, guys, I want, I'm really, this Tuesday class is a discussion class. This is not a class for Brian and I to come and talk. I want all of you to take this challenge. And I always say, when you, before he sat down here to, to teach all this, he must have spent some time to understand how this thing is. You cannot teach somebody something that you don't understand. So when you teach, you learn more than the people you are teaching. I am giving you this as a challenge. Take this Tuesday class and present something. We want people to present. Learn something new. Come and present. We want you to present this so that we all learn together. We all learn from each other. I mean, I cannot tell you that everything that, you, that is presented in this class, that I know it. Brian cannot also claim that. Neither, neither any of you can claim that. So we all learn from one another. Let's take this Tuesday class Die, till thy kingdom come, till you decide that you don't want to stay in the IT field. Let's use this, and we can grow this to a very big platform and teach one another, learn from each other, right? Thank you so much, guys. So uh, I'll give over the mic to Meg. Uh, Meg will present her environment. She just started working, and she wants to understand everything in her environment. I think that it's a be beautiful situation so that we can all see what are some of the things that she needs to pay attention to, what are some of the things that are in our environment? And this is how you also learn environment. Stop when you recording, though. Sorry? Stop recording. Yes. Before we even start recording, let me stop it. Let me show you uh, what he was showing there. I wanted to bring, uh, draw your attention again back to what Emmanuel just presented today. This whole green script, apparently in my own environment, that's what we use. Huh? So don't look at it and feel like this is just maybe for um uh for practical fabric purposes companies out there all use whole green. that's all most of them they use whole green because it has already been written customized everybody knows how it works and they just use that so if i lock onto any server in my environment for example look if i lock onto any server and open jobs what do you see this is exactly what he just presented these are the same jobs if i lock onto any server for example, let me lock onto another one. Let's go to this one. Connect. If I go to the jobs under that, let me minimize this. If I go to SQL Server Agent Jobs, Expand Job, what do I see? Whole green script. So this is really production. All these servers I'm showing you here are production used by a whole company. So this is very, very important. And if you find yourself in an environment where so they're asking things that I don't feel like you cannot bring in something like this because almost I would say 60 to 70 percent of companies out there use Holar Greens for their backup, for their maintenance. Right? I just wanted to add this to that. Okay, so I will stop recording here so that Meg can present her environment and uh, we'll continue after that. All right, please. <laughs> 